Hi and welcome to this week's action ship which is flying, where is it going this week? Put your hands here on your middle, the bottom of your ribs. What big muscle is in there? Very big, very important if it doesn't move you're dead. So it likes to move, very very important. Do you know? It's your diaphragm. So today we're going to be looking at breathing. Breathing, the movement of your diaphragm and what has that got to do with allowing things to flow, allowing things to move in your life and in your body. So here is a picture. We looked at the ribs a couple of weeks ago with Elliot and you see how the ribs are coming around here and then you've got the diaphragm doming up inside. So this is a muscle. So how do muscles like to move? Do they like to be rigid and held in place? Or do they like to lengthen and shorten? Put your hand on your bicep and just keep it rigid, don't move your arm. So now this muscle is held in one position. So does your arm enjoy this? Or would it actually prefer to move? So notice how when you now move your arm, the muscle is getting longer and shorter. So I'm not going to give you a muscle <laughs> lesson today, but just the idea that muscles like to lengthen and shorten. And so the fibers are actually sliding apart and sliding together in order to give you this movement. So in your diaphragm, it's very important that the fibers, the muscle, is actually able to lengthen and shorten so that you can breathe fully. So why do you care if you're breathing well? Obviously, you know, a lot of people talk about breath and this breathing exercise and that breathing exercise, but really, how does the body like to breathe and what's it actually doing? So if we can see what is my body actually doing and am I allowing that to happen then we're going to be able to improve it for everything we do. So just take your hands on your kind of the base of your ribs and make a dome. So this is representing your diaphragm. So when you breathe do you know does your diaphragm go down or does it go up? Or does it go in or does it go out? What's it doing? So just take a breath and notice. What does my diaphragm do when I breathe? Do you know? Okay. And just notice how your breath feels. So now you're going to imagine when you breathe in that the, do the diaphragm is actually moving down. So just take your hands like this, link your fingers, and when you breathe in, just kind of cross your fingers like this. So that's like the muscle is contracting concentrically. And then when you breathe out, it's, it's lengthening eccentrically. So you're gonna breathe in. And breathe out, allow it to dome up and breathe in, it contracts, moves down and out and moves up and breathe in. Uh, so can you imagine that happening inside of you? So as you're breathing in the diaphragm is moving down and as you breathe out diaphragm is moving up. So now just put your hand here on your diaphragm and the other hand on your belly. Can you see that? Okay, good. So when you breathe in, you're going to imagine the diaphragm moves down and if the diaphragm is moving down, here's the diaphragm, and I am, do you remember what's underneath your diaphragm? We talked about it a few weeks ago in this nice picture here. Do you see the diaphragm here, what's underneath it? One of the organs, which is shown here, is your liver. So you've got your liver, stomach, spleen, whole bunch of organs in there. So I am some organs. When the diaphragm moves down, what do I need to do? 
I need to go somewhere, right? So if you're compressing the cavity in your belly, your organs are going to need to move out a little bit. So your belly is going to naturally move out. And then when you breathe out, they come back in and the diaphragm rises. So let's do that together. So breathe in, diaphragm moves down, organs a little out, belly a little out, and out, belly in, diaphragm up. And breathe in, diaphragm down, belly out, and out, belly in, diaphragm up, and breathing in, diaphragm down, belly out, and belly in, diaphragm domes up. So can you actually see that inside of you? So now, what about if we need to think, well no, because if I want to have a nice strong belly and a strong six pack, then I need to keep my belly in all the time. So suck in your belly button and keep your belly button in, keep your stomach in, and now take a nice deep breath and notice what happens. Can you breathe? And notice what happens to your nervous system. So really shallow, you're going to be taking shallow breaths, or maybe your ribs are coming out to the side. And it actually puts you into more of the reptilian mode, which puts you more into fight or flight. So let's just come back to diaphragm moving down, belly out, and belly in, diaphragm up. So now just move around and imagine that your diaphragm is elastic and slippery, it can slide around, your organs are sliding around in there. Yeah, it's like you have a big rubber band, elastic, moving, <sighs> and remember your ribs, what happens to your ribs when you go to the side? Remember, did you find your ribs? Actually, you should go this way around. When you go to the side, they open and then they come closer together. So now, if your diaphragm is attached to your ribs, when you go to the side, the diaphragm is also lengthening and then it's shortening. So put your hands on one of your sides and let's go to the side and you're going to breathe out and imagine the diaphragm lengthening and then coming back and it's shortening. And diaphragm lengthens and shortens. So can you imagine that sliding muscles sliding apart, sliding together. And one more time, diaphragm is sliding apart and sliding together. Now just drop your arms and take a breath into one side, the side that you practiced, and breathe into the other side. Do you feel a difference? Do you feel your breathing is starting to change in the side that you practice? Maybe that whole shoulder is more relaxed. I actually feel it in my face and head just Ooh. present. So would you like to do the other side? <laughs> so put your hands on your other side, feel your ribs in there, say hello to your ribs. And let's go to the other side so the diaphragm is lengthening and diaphragm is coming back together and diaphragm is lengthening and shortening, or diaphragm is sliding apart, and sliding together, and let's take an out breath as we slide it apart, and together, and one more time, slide it apart, let it slide apart, and let it slide back together, and just notice how you feel. So there is a lot more going on when you breathe. This is a tiny, tiny 
tidbit of introduction to see how much you can do, how much you can change in such a short period of time when you're aware of what's going on. And there's a lot more happening with the lungs and there's a spiral action and um, if you want to learn more, which of course you do because you're watching this video, if you are in New York, you can get to New York the weekend of November 5th and 6th. Um, on November 6th, I'm teaching a whole day on breathing and psoas. It will revolutionize your life. So that is a whole day Franklin Method breathing and psoas workshop. So why do you care about breathing other than obviously you're feeling better right now? Why do you think <sighs> breathing makes you feel better? So did you know that when you breathe, <sighs> there are things moving through you? When you're feeling emotions, when you're interacting in life and having experiences, they need to be processed by the diaphragm. So if you're not breathing fully, your body isn't able to process things fully. You're not able to get the full wisdom and the full learning from it. And instead the emotion just gets kind of stuck and rigid here. And so many people will find that they feel very emotional and often it's because they're not breathing fully and you know whether that's because the body doesn't recognize how to process things fully or if their breathing came first it obviously is going to be unique for each person but getting the breathing going is going to really help things to flow so take your arms up imagine new experiences new versions of you new insights new learning coming in and letting go so breathe in again breathe in your inspiration all of your new ideas all of your things you're excited about and breathe out now letting them go and be released and again breathing in letting things come in and letting them go so as our breath improves, things are able to flow through us better and the coming and going. And it was funny, last week Eric arrived in my video that I was making for you and this week he is departing today, he's back off touring around. So, <sighs> breathing in the new, allowing the experiences and then also letting them go is part of our journey of life so that we can allow more newness to come in. So last image I have for you, because Elliot was playing with this the other week. For your breath. I don't know if you remember, but she was saying, look, it's bigger. And then it's smaller. So imagine that flow, that flow of your life from expansion to contraction in each breath. So your action this week, this is going to be a challenging one for you to find time for, is to breathe. So you're going to be breathing, I think it's like 50,000 times a day, I need to check that number. You're going to be breathing a lot of times. So can you be present with your breath, can you imagine that expansion and contraction and can you start to get closer to what's actually happening and can you imagine your inspiration coming in and everything you need to let go of being released so practice this let me know if you have any insights any new experiences from this and if there's anybody you know who breathes then i'm sure that they would enjoy being able to breathe a little more happily, a little more freely, a little more inspired. So send them this video, tell them to watch it and please jump on the blog and write me a comment. I really love hearing from you. Go jump in your action ship and I will see you next week. Bye. So do you want to come and have a whole day of experiencing the amazingness of your breath? 
So everything improves as your breathing improves, your digestion will improve, your circulation will improve, your exercising will be far more efficient because you're actually going to be exercising one of your key or the key muscle in your body and everything as you I'm sure no affects everything so if there's any holding in your diaphragm it's going to affect your entire muscular system and the way that you process emotion and the way your body is able to regenerate itself and see what needs to be fixed and basically everything in your life so if you want to improve everything in your life <laughs> I guarantee you are going to have an amazing, amazing experience if you come November 6th, the whole day of Franklin Method. If you don't know what the psoas is, that was the other part, breathing in psoas. Psoas is a deep hip flexor, so it flexes your hip, it stabilizes your lumbar spine. If you want to be able to get your leg higher, if you're a dancer, if you want to release back pain, if you sit at your computer for long periods of time, and get achy in this area if you feel unstable in your pelvis in your lower back come to this workshop it will again it's going to revolutionize your body and your life because they're connected so come over to laura haynes franklin if you're not there jump on the action ship list if you're not on that sign up for this workshop and I will also put a special link if you're not able to get to New York City for November 6th. Um, I'm going to be taking names for people who are interested in doing an online breathing workshop. So this will be a combination of Franklin Method, learning the dynamics, the anatomy, the movement of breath, and combined with energy work, movement, and what the diaphragm means, its consciousness, and how it relates to all of our other organs, systems in our body. Doesn't that sound exciting? So a whole culmination of wondrousness. So sign up for that too. And uh, <sighs> go forth and breathe. Bye.